going in and working with a particular like divinator or sort of spiritual leader or healer. Right. right. Um, and sort of, I guess, over a time period, earning their trust and revealing more about their culture and the things they do. Right. One um, one tribe on. one tribe per episode. One um, shaman per episode. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, it's at least, I mean, the first series is pitched as a six-part series, and it's sort of trans-global. Right. So where is this pitch in its production sort of circuit? Is this Animal Planet has came to you with an idea that they've already greenlit, or they, um, no, they're no, no, baiting you for lit. ideas? Um, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a mix of our Animal Planet's idea. It came from, uh, we actually we made another, we make quite a lot of series. I don't know if you know much about Icon, but we made quite a few series on all planets. Um, and in one of our shows, we had a really interesting uh, encounter with an African witch doctor, and the story took a turn for something slightly more unusual and slightly away from the original plan. Um, but it was a great film, and we came back with this footage, and it was just incredible. Um, and Animal Planet loved it, and we, see, we decided to kind of make a, I guess, a spin off from, from just seeing that footage and go out and look at that, that angle. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, it was actually it was a film on hippos, but it ended up getting really involved with this witch doctor who was kind of saying that he could stop the hippo attacks and some of the stuff that went on was it was amazing and it was really important for social cohesion in the community and it was it was a really interesting story uh-huh. um, but what we have been given is um, they're happy with the treatment and we've been given funding to find a host that's right happy with okay sounds good how many hosts are you entertaining um, well, we've spoken to quite. I mean, we've spoken to quite a lot of candidates, but we're getting down to a quite uh, to to a sort of we've got it down to a long list, which um, I kind of I wanted to put you on anyway because I really sort of I really liked your show reel and kind of um, the vibe on it. But um, we'll, we're going to be getting it down to a short list of six this week. Uh huh. Good. Uh, what are the creden- credentials of the other candidates? They're a real mix. I mean, I think all of them. You know what? They are a real mix. I mean. There's sort of a couple of non-anthropologists in there, but people who have either studied a shaman or there's one guy who's sort of from Native American heritage and studied sort of medicinal plants. Yeah. Um, it, it's a real range. Um, obviously, we want people who have got some kind of real reason for, for wanting to do this, though, you know, so it's a, it's a real journey for them. Yes. Awesome. Um, well, it sounds like um, it sounds like a good show. Um, what kind of information will you, or will you need from me to be able to uh, pitch me? Well, I mean, I've, I've seen a couple of show reels, but I, I mean, I don't know which ones are your latest or which ones you'd prefer us to be looking at. Or because I really, I mean, I ended up sort of as you do when you're doing this research, you kind of look from emailing ac- academics or, and networks and we know all around the world to sort yeah. of even doing YouTube trolls, and that's how I found you. You're right. Right. So what kind of material would you like to present? Um, well, I mean, at this stage, I mean, it's just nice to see kind of see in action. I mean, I think you've obviously got lots of lots of nice bits of footage. Um, I was actually looking at your, because I, I don't know if they're the only two Cheryl's up there, but I think it was a 2008 one and a 2010 one. Um, probably not 2010. I don't know, maybe it was 2009, but yeah. I, I think... It was just the one with, with, with the gun. With the gun, yes. That was a, that one was fun. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I actually, I think I, I kind of said the one before, I think, to show you in a lot of different kind of environments. That's right. And... That's right. Well, I haven't produced anything since, though. So you've got basically the best stuff. If you wanted to look at, you know, the showreel is a condensation of a bunch of different Doc- yeah, I course. made 16 documentaries, so that's like... And what, what, what those were for current TV, right? That's right. Cool. So they, um, yeah, they commissioned those. Okay, and they, those, were, were they, those were like sort of self-presented, produced everything, weren't they? Yeah, shot, hosted, edited, whole nine yards. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And they were quite, from what I gather, quite quite a range of uh, environments and encounters and things going on. Yes, yes, they 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 were. Um, I guess the closest that I could get. Oh, you should see this one. My my most shamanic um, documentary is something I'm, I call Tantric Tourists, and you can see it on Vimeo. Okay. Um, and I can send you the link to that, but that's actually. Oh, What's that? 
That would be really good. Because that one, I actually work with a um, Tibetan Buddhist, Tantric Buddhist, um, shamanic guru. And yeah. get rather embroiled with, with his drama. And that's probably the best thing to show. But I've oh, lived, I lived and worked with Native Americans for four years on, an, in, on a Native American reservation before I came to L.A. So I've also lived and done, like, real long-term, like, participant observation with, with Native people. Cool. And I was, I was just wondering a bit more, like, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, we, we actually, we've kind of gone in a bit of a, a mixed angle with this, because we want someone who's got a real interest and a real passion for shamanism, yeah. and potentially some study and some sort of academic background in it, yep. but we, we didn't want to go all the way of having someone who sort of had, had done everything already. Right, right. So, I mean, it is kind of mixed outlook, but I, I just wondered what might interest you, kind of, what kind of, ab about the fact that it's specifically about shamanism. Well, I mean, there's, um, sh what, what we call shamanism is actually a mix of two different kind of practices, I think. I think that the first one is, is about actual sort of the science. It's sort of, it's sort of primitive science. Um, the, it's a primitive form of, of medicine and working yeah. with the, 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 the mental state of people that are, that are supposedly ill and trying to use what you can, charisma and performance and ritual Definitely. and some sort of um, plant-based medicines um, to sort of shake them out of their sort of subjective conception of illness, of being ill. Yeah. Right? So that's the one angle of it. But the other angle of shamanism is the healing for the tribe, right? Is that the yeah. shaman is actually in a way sort of this martyr or victim for the whole tribe meaning that they take on the responsibility to go into these altered states of consciousness to explore these 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 uncharted mental domains in order to do healing that is that in their crazy primitive mind m mindset is sort of heals the the ills that have befallen upon the entire tribe sure so those are kind of like the two sort of ways in which i would like to think about sh shamanism and once I worked with them, I would do my damnedest to try to to not exotify the tribal people in the shamanic work, but yeah. to say that these are actually rationalistic practices, and also and also there's something to poss possibly learn in our contemporary, you know, overly technologized, overly you know, modernized, industrialized okay. nation. There's something. There's something. There's some kernel of wisdom regarding working with nature, being being susceptible to, being in tune with um, some of these more subtle energies that are out yeah. there. So Definitely. that's the kind of method that I would do, and I would be very, I would be very wary of not exotifying um, and yeah. creating that that sense of empathy and identification with them but at the same point at the same point it's often a very funny exploratory you know kind of what, what we call in anthropology a liminal state meaning it's like it's out on the you know the 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 frontier of what is known and so in that space there's a lot of room for play and and a bit of humor and a bit of experimentation and and frankly to get into a good altered states of consciousness you actually have to sort of pretend a little bit you have to take oh, on the sort of mentality, and that is always sort of a clumsy, fun thing to do that requires somebody that has that empathy and has that adventurous spirit to be able to do it, and then to be able to translate for an American or a world, you know, televisual yeah. audience yeah. somehow. How do you translate it? How do you, how do you dumb it down without dumbing down and exotifying the primitive person, the, yeah. the, the, the shamanic practitioner, while at the same time translating it? So I mean, it's a it's a it's a very complex set of of you know methods that that is it, uh, it take a very special person to be able to I agree you know yeah. do it right. I think it's a real balance as well, and I think I think the way our angle we're going to have to take is I think I think almost to start with we're going to have to be okay with a little bit of exot exotifying because I know that that's going to make an animal 
Animal Planet viewer go, oh, oh, I want to watch this, and then they see it. And the whole, our whole point is to, because we do want a, a, you know, a, a host that at the beginning might be a bit shocked, but they're, so they're willing to be there and learn, and by the end of it, it, it all seems like it makes a lot of sense, I think. Yes, that's right. That would be that would be a great method. I mean, I think Bruce Perry did a really good job of this in yeah. in the BBC's Tribes, or what we called Going Tribal here in the U.S. I thought, sure. you know, he he really struck that really that really artistic and sensitive balance between being a fantastic translator and developing incredible empathy and rapport with the people, while at the same time making just a ridiculously titillating, you know, yeah. spectacle. No, I, I, I agree. Actually, definitely. I think I think I think it's I've it's, it's did it well. I don't think there's been um, there's been many many anthropologists since really. No, it so. hasn't. It hasn't. And anthropologists hated that show. And I actually wrote a couple articles trying to redeem it and saying, look, he he really shows what it was it's like to like go out and try to gain that first that that that. that that sort of clumsy first two weeks of like trying to get to know a, a, a for another, right? He I really. Think so. I, I think I think it's a funny thing because I think you know we're not making this show for anthropologists. Yeah. Right. And I think Bruce Barry wasn't making this show for anthropologists. No. It educated a lot of people that otherwise wouldn't have been interested. Absolutely. And also, you know, the imbibing of the inebriants. I think that that would be that would be something that I would definitely sincerely want to do. I don't know if, if that's going to fit in with your insurance budget. I, I, I think it will. I mean, I think we, um, no, it definitely would. Um, but we are keen maybe to do that in one show, um, in, in terms of the first series, which should be six episodes. Yeah. But we don't want to kind of make people think that shamanism is all about sort of psych, psychoactive substances. That's right. In some, in some groups it is, but actually the majority of groups it isn't. Um, so That's for us, right. And for us, it's finding a real range. Like we've kind of in. I mean, in the first, in the. I mean, these, these are only sort of all the allocations are kind of subject to change once we go into sort of hopefully full production on this because we'll have a. It'll be really crucial mm-hmm. working with the people we've got on the ground and you know to get those ins to the people that we need we need to be with and that we need to trust us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so so it could all change, but I mean, at the moment we've got everything from sort of uh, the butcher masters and Spitty who are more like travelling showmen. Yeah. Um, to sort of, you know, iOS Garros and to yep. Dombayasi and Madagascar who are really, right. really important cosmologists. Yes, yes, good, excellent. You've been doing some research, Sophie. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I wrote the treatment, I Awesome. <laughs> I didn't actually know, because I mean, I'm, I, know, I know a bit about it, but I'm, I'm a zoologist, actually. But, oh, cool. But it was, it was really fascinating to, to look into, actually, and really, because I, I, I knew a bit already, but um, I kind of... I didn't realize how many parallels there were, actually, until, until I really looked into it. Absolutely. So what was the criteria you selected your six um, your six subjects by? Um, do you know what? There, there, isn't, it, the, there wasn't a, a solid criteria. It was, it was quite difficult, actually. I mean, I did. I've spoken to a lot of people about this, and unfortunately, a, a lot of academics are not the best communicators. Yeah. Um, which can be tough. Um, sure. Being like, I think you've got brilliant credentials, but... I don't think you're a natural fit for this role because, yeah. you know, we, we need someone who can be sort of the all-American character that relates to the audience and sure. be the kind of person with the, the credibility to say these things. Yes, absolutely. Um, but, I mean, for us, I mean, I think we really, we weren't really sure what we wanted. We wanted someone who'd be sort of adventurous. Um, we wanted someone who was sort of, an, or, I guess, an authentic sort of charismatic and eloquent voice for the subject matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, not something, someone that was too over the edge in terms of experience, because we, we wanted it to be a novel journey yes. and a learning curve. Totally. But someone kind of who had the ability and the understanding to to learn, you know, to take on that learning curve. Because I think a lot of people can't do that. Would be quite sort of find that quite difficult. Yes. Right. I I like your vision. I think you have a very very good way, a very good approach. And I mean, also, I mean, we were looking at um, both genders, but we, we're very much. I think we're skewing towards towards um, a male host. I mean, yeah. it's only purely because a lot of the shamanic ritual is very male-based, and I, I don't think they really, having spoken to a lot of anthropologists out in the field, I just don't think they really react well to having a woman on the scene always. Yeah, I know. It's too bad, really. It would it would just be, it would have to be part of the pitch, meaning you, your pitch would have to be, um, you know, you've seen shows with men going out and doing shamanic adventures. What happens when a woman... Like, what new complications arise, you know, when a woman... I mean, I think we are looking... 
one thing I did say is, I mean, I have found a couple of a couple of brilliant girls, and I mean, one thing I have sort of said is, you know, if this did take off and it did really well, you know, it, there'd always be opportunity to do, you know, a series of women women sh- shamans. Exactly. There's, a, there's only a few of them, a few groups, but yeah. they're very fascinating, and often the reasons the reasons for their survival is, is is really intriguing. Like, like I didn't realise that shaman in Siberia, the reason most of them are women is because um, the males were kind of persecuted by the Soviets but the women weren't seen as important enough so they weren't persecuted and the uh, and the sort of whole knowledge remained through them oh that's cool that's really cool so I, I do think there's a really good outlook for women but I think the the majority of shamanic practices are very male and it's, it's quite a chauvinistic world as well <laughs> it is well it sure is yeah and I mean it can be quite a scary world as well I think I think there's you know it, it's definitely I think with, with shamanism sort of light and the good you know I was often very close to sorcery as well and exactly. you know it really does slip between and I think also you need someone who's going to be able to sort of handle that yes yes you are right I mean we've got I mean our crews are very very used to being in, in remote locations thanks to doing so much with indigenous tribes thanks to doing so much uh, bizarre natural history work and mm-hmm. you know I, I think I, th- I mean I think we're very well placed to make this so I think it's a really exciting show yeah it is. It is. It's a great pitch, and um, I know this idea floats around all of Discovery Channel's um, subsidiaries a lot of the time. I, I I get hit with this pitch quite a bit, but yeah. I like your approach on it. Thank you. I mean, I, I I think I do. I think one of the reasons we sort of got that step further about it is it actually came back from footage. Yeah. Um, that was quite remarkable, and. And I do think there will be moments, of, you know, where you go, there's moments, you know, I don't want anyone to be too sceptical, but there are going to be moments where you're going, oh, come on, really. And then there's going to be moments where you're like, okay, I have no idea what just happened. Because that's what happened to our presenter in, in Africa. And mm-hmm. he was totally sceptical because he's an animal presenter. He was not out there to hang around with a witch doctor. And mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. was really freaked out, bless him. Mm. Cool, I'd like to see that. Yeah, no, it's great, but, but I mean, I think the thing is we came back with that, and, and it, it worked really well on camera, and yeah. I think a lot of, when you talk about shamanic practices and spiritual healing and the things happening, like, it, it doesn't sound like you could see it, and I think it really proved the whole energy of, you know, the town was going crazy, and there was all this kind of, sort of Im- amazing kind of, like, vibrancy and electricity in the air, and it really conveyed really well on the, on the camera. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. Sophie, what would you? Uh, what else do you need from me? I mean, I mean, I'm kind of. I, I, I guess I know a bit. I mean, what have you? What have you? Have you done much to kind of looking into sh- shamanism as a sort of side interest, or? Um. Well, um, yeah. I mean, I've read just about everything you can read on it. It's. It isn't the center of my research contempt right now. Um. But my work has I've yeah I mean I've researched quite a bit on it and like I said I lived with Native Americans for four years on an on an yeah. Indian reservation that involved um, working with elders recording their their traditional stories in their traditional sacred locations it also involved a lot of sweat lodge work um, yeah. I currently live on an intentional commune which is which is pretty trippy right now. Um, and the work that I've done primarily in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains in an area called Sikkim in eastern Nepal has involved quite a bit of work with, um, people practicing animistic religiosity. And so I could show you a couple of those clips. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be great because, I mean, I, you know, I, I think you sound great. I just, I just obviously get on stage when I'm going to be wanting to push, push you to my boss and the commissioners and stuff. So it's good to have as much as we can kind of pushing right. the side of your interest in, in shamanism and why you want to do it. Yes. Um, right. Um, what's the question? No, it wasn't really a question. I was just saying, you know, obviously you know, I'm asking these questions because it's, it's really good <laughs> to kind of have as much information as possible and really yes. kind of know, you know, I guess, my job now is to, I guess, you know, sell you to the, to the commission. So. Right. Um, 
Well, right, I, I mean, I don't, I don't need loads. It's more just a kind of, I guess you told me a bit, it's more just about, kind of, I guess, your passion for it and why it would be kind of a really good study that you'd want to do. Okay, well... I think I made that point. I, I would like I would yeah. like to I would like to have this opportunity to engage with a cross cultural survey of these shamanic practices um, to do to do two things. One, personally learn about them, um, and also to redeem them in the eyes of the modern world on, on some level. Yeah. In what way could we translate their their body of knowledge about the about ecology? And about some about sort of metaphysics um, into into some way that can that can help um, reconnect the you know the, the the very modernized people with 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 their environment around them. I think that that is the that, that's the long term um, you know pervasive power um, that that might come from an exploration of, of shamanism in the year two thousand and eleven. That would be the most beautiful thing to to um, get into. Other than that, I mean, I could scream and yell and tell you how how much fun it, it's going to be, and and how great I am on camera, and how empathetic, empathic I can get. I mean, I could just blather on about that, but that's not, you know, I'm sure you can hear that from sure. from professional TV host wannabes. That's not where I'm coming from, you know. Yeah. I'm coming from someone who who has that capacity, but really would like to would like to. Um... And what? So what, what? I mean, because if you're um... Your your studies. I mean, obviously, you did sort of the stuff with Native American and stuff. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, what are, what are your kind of sort of key sort of research interests? My my present one. I'm actually writing a book on on uh, internet culture and about um, how the internet is changing television production. So I spent a lot of time with nonfiction television producers in in studios in L.A. and in New York. Um, trying to understand how their unique value set, their 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 desire to change the world for the better, um, is coming into conflict with their profit motive in this emergent um, this emergent new industry somewhere between cable TV and the internet. And I'm studying how, you know, in 2005, you know, we all started making documentary, you know, short documentary films, put them on YouTube. By 2011, we're entering this new phase of professionalization in which a, a lot of the open, the openness and the participatoriness and the amateurness of the internet is now being replaced by uh, um, the corporate consolidation, you know, the advent of uh, the the injection of money into this into this industry. So I'm doing a very sort of corporate anthropology, you know, trying to yeah. trying to record the rituals and the values of like elite Western media producers. That's you know, and I've got two years to write this book, and that's what I'm spending most of my time doing. Wow, and I was just wondering because obviously, what were you doing with the, when you were sort of more kind of out in the field in situ? Um, well, my major foci were um, um, the the plight of indigenous people, um, so basically focusing on cultural preservation. Yeah. Most of my work in the, in India has been around working with uh, two different tribes in that area, the Bhutia and the Lepsha, as they are being inundated by by major hydroelectric dams, and they're being yeah. marginalized by uh, by a majority Nepali speaking people. So a couple of my films have been about that, um, and I'm, I'm in the process of producing a long-range um, uh, feature-length film about divided cities around the world, uh, cities that have major walls in them, dividing either ethnic populations or, or religious populations. So I've worked in Cyprus, and, and I've worked in Jerusalem and Palestine uh, two, three times, and I've worked in, in uh, Belfast, and Berlin, and I'm and I'm in the process of maybe going to Iraq to look at how the green zone that that our consolidated forces have made yeah. there. And so I'm making a big a, a bigish a, a big film about divided cities around the world and how wrong that is. So mo most of my work, most of my documentary work, comes out of um, an activistic spirit and a, a very much a spirit of, of independent, um, you know, deeply subjective ethnographic filmmaking. I mean, I've worked with Iraqi refugees in, in Cyprus. I've worked with uh, Bhutanese refugees 
in, in Bhutan and, and, and when they got to the U.S. I've been making a film about them for a long time. Sure. So, and uh, I was in Kyrgyzstan right after the 2005 um, Tulip Revolution, and I, and I made a documentary and wrote a paper about how, about how the Internet facilitated this revolutionary activity. I've made a documentary about how uh, China and India are fighting over these 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 border areas. Yeah. So I mean, I take on these big geopolitical issues. Um, that's where my work has been focused um, in the past few years, since I left the Indian reservation in two thousand and four. Sure. Um, I was I was kind of wondering about. I mean, I think you you kind of spoken about it a bit already, to be honest. But just obviously, you know. We definitely want sort of an anthropologist rather than, you know, a biologist or, or, yes. or an ecologist. But, right. I mean, kind of, do, do you have a sort of side interest in the natural world as well? Because it obviously will play a big part in it being an animal planet. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Cool. I'm an amateur botanist. I know lots of names of plants, animals, totally into it. Um, and that's partially why I think that, that a study of shamanism today could be redeemed because of our need and our, the necessity and also because of pharmaceuticals, um, to be a, to work with sh- shamanic practitioners and to gather, curate, and, and analyze their their knowledge of the plant world. I think that that's. I mean, it's something ridiculous. Like I think I think twenty five percent of all um, all sort of medicines on the market come from defensive plant compounds or something massive like that. Absolutely. Absolutely, and and also and also, I mean, let's think about what's the connection between shamanism and animals. If it's an animal planet show, in what ways do animals, um, the animal as an icon, continue? You know, um, is a reoccurring motif in the visions that shamans have. How about like the clan? How clans, are, the the shamanic clans, are represented by animals? In what ways are animals brought in as as far as sacrificial? You know, subjects, yeah. or as far as sort of like godlike, you know, you know, deities in the shamanic cosmology. I mean, that would be re- that would actually be really fascinating. And that's something that's I, been I very understudied. Yeah. And it's a real range as well. Like, I mean, I think sometimes their vast knowledge of the animal kingdom is so. I mean, it's always interesting to learn from, and sometimes it's positive, and you know, sometimes it's negative. You know, in, in Africa, there's a lot of trouble with poaching for sort of moosey and fetishes and stuff. Yeah. But in other places, there's a real inherent respect for the wildlife, and it's, it, it, it's really interesting to see this contrast, I think. Yes. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it, I was just going also as well, I mean, I know you're writing this book now and stuff, I was just wondering what kind of, would, you know, h- how is your kind of flexibility and availability? Um, for the right project, it's, it's available. I'm on a grant from the government, the U.S. government, right now for two years. Yeah. to do this field work, but it's kind of, I'm totally free. I'm not teaching right now. I'm just sure. supposed to be doing the field work for this project. Yeah, and obviously, you want to, I mean, when it, it, we'd probably, if, you know, if we did get, sort of, if we did get it commissioned, I mean, the earliest we'd, we'd, we'd get it commissioned would be, what we, what we'd be planning to do is, is with, our, with our potential hopes, I mean, we're going to share, share with all one or two people. Yeah. Um, hopefully in, in, in like, the end of February, hopefully, I think. I mean, we're, Obviously, with you, you would do that in the US, um, get a cameraman up, uh, probably a directing cameraman. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then we'd probably be planning to, we probably wouldn't get off the ground realistically to at least sort of May ish, because obviously we need at least a few months because of the delicate nature of the subject and caring for people on the ground, working yeah. things out. You know, right. we'd, we'd want to get out there fully prepared. Yes. Yes. I, I could see that. Um, but then, I mean, what we normally do is it's normally about. We normally try and film most of them sort of back to back ish. It's just um, we study about just just over two weeks in the field um, for each one, but it would be sort of like a, a week break, at, uh, you know, uh-huh. wherever home is for you be- between the um, yeah. the filming sh- shoots. So I'd probably take just trying to add it up, add it up now. Um, yeah, sort of. Oh God, I can't. Sorry, it's really late. I can't count. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> Oh gosh, I don't even know now. It's a sort of just an account. Um, eighteen, yeah, probably about you know about four months. Um, yeah. Breaks in between stuff, obviously with like com records and that kind of stuff as well, and press. But you know, you, you, we definitely move sort of around things. And yes. We've got loads of presenters in the US that we sort of work around other, yeah. other commitments and things. Mhm, mhm. Sounds cool. Brilliant. Well, yeah. um, great. And um, if you, if you could send me those links, that'd be really.
I will. Rachel, and then I'll be in touch soon. Okay, Sophie. It's been nice chatting. Great, folks. Have a good, have a good rest of the day. Okay, and you, and have a nice uh, sleep. Sleep. I'll sleep well. <laughs>